And the question for this week is, I use the name vulva for the visible female genitalia, but many of my parent friends and acquaintances and even books refer to these parts as the vagina. I would love to know your thoughts. Thank you. And welcome back to Sitting in a Car. This is Sarah Sproul and I sit in a car every week and help you to raise a confident and caring young person who respects themselves and the people around them and has the skills to be able to communicate in their intimate relationships in the future. So the question, I use the name vulva for the visible genitalia. Let's have a chat about this. So this isn't uncommon. Lots of people use the word vagina to mean everything for um, that sort of anatomy and so it's not surprising that this parent is coming into conflict or having problems with the fact that she wants to be more specific with her lads she's raising two lads now why would she go to this effort or why do I think it's useful to go to this effort because I actually do think it's useful and here's why 30% of people with a vulva or a vagina tend to only 30% now would tend to have an orgasm with some sort of vaginal stimulation, whether that be with a penis or some sort of other toy or device that is penetrating the vagina for stimulation. So that's only 30%. That leaves 70% of us um, who may not orgasm that way. And when we just use the word vagina to describe that whole of that sort of genitals, what happens is we lose the ability to talk about specific parts uh, like the clitoris or the labia or the, you know, the labia of different types. And so if there is stimulation that needs to happen with the other parts of those genitals, then if we don't have a name for them, if we haven't uh, described to our kids what those names are, then it's really hard for their partners in the future or themselves if they have those parts on their body, to be able to communicate to their future partners or even to think about it for themselves, what are the parts of their genitals that feel the best? Because I don't know about you, but I'm not really interested in my kids being in intimate relationships with others where they don't feel pleasure. If the pleasure is all about the other person's genitals or the other person doing something to their genitals and it's not doing it for them. It doesn't feel good. I want my kid to be able to communicate well enough to get the hell out of there or to talk to their partner or work out for themselves. What is the thing that is feeling nice for them? Uh, what is What are the best sensations? So the reason why differentiating between the vulva and the vagina is so important that it's going to give our young people and, and future adults the opportunity to communicate very specifically about the things that they enjoy when they're in uh, physically intimate situations. Um, so that could be clitoral simulation, that could be uh, teasing around the area that feels sensitive and good for them. Some people don't like direct touch. Some people like to be touched around and about the area, not exactly on the area. Think about that. These conversations we're putting in place as parents are really to equip our kids later on for being good partners, intimate partners for other people, and to be able to advocate for their own pleasure in situations where they're sharing their body with someone else. I'm just thinking too that the easiest way to talk about vulvas and vaginas and to make that differentiation with our kids, and this is um, a strategy that I use when I'm teaching relationship and sexuality education in the classroom, is to say to the kids, listen, I'm going to tell you some information that not even most of the adults in the world know. And most of the adults think that this whole area on a female body is called a vagina but I'm here to tell you that they're actually that's actually not right and that the outside parts that we see are the vulva the inside tube of muscle is the vagina and you know that now but you may notice that the adults around you don't realize that and they may be still using the word vagina and now you can decide because you have the information whether you let them know what you know whether you just keep it to yourself, that's going to be completely up to you. Just going to get, add one more thing here that some research out there is suggesting that people with a penis and a scrotum um, are more likely to uh, experience an orgasm in partnered sex than people that have a vagina and a vulva. So have a think about that. Why is that happening? Is that okay? And what as parents can we do about that to equalize um the experience of pleasure in 
our young people's future intimate relationships. And that is sitting in a car for another week where I have helped you think through a problem that is going to um, increase your ability to raise a confident and caring young person who respects themselves and the people around them. Bye for now.